think uh, arthroscopic uh, partial meniscectomy is one of the most commonly performed surgery. I think most of us also do it quite often. But how useful it is. Okay. Let's uh, go through the indications. Let's see some literature and then have our own conclusion. Change mark, Kira. Yes, please. Okay. So the most common indication for which a partial meniscectomy is done is a degenerative meniscal tear uh, and also a neglected traumatic tears. Next, please. A displaced or an unstable meniscal tears that are not amenable to repair, especially in the red-white zone and the white-white zone, the complex tears, the segmental tears with concordant joint line tenderness and reproducible mechanical symptoms such as popping, catching, locking are the common indications for arthroscopic partial meniscectomy. The other indications include, change please. The tears which have not responded for conservative management. You wait for a while, you see the patient is still symptomatic. He has classical uh, symptoms and signs. Then you go ahead and do a APM. Next please. The untreated meniscal tears, including macerated tissue tearing, as you see in the picture, has been reported to be a known risk factor for development of arthritis over two and a half year time with almost five times increased risk of art arthritis. That's the reason you do a APM. What are the advantages of it? The one, I think the foremost and the most important advantage which most of us notice is an immediate relief of pain and early return to activity and sports. Apart from this, we now come to the disadvantages, which actually outweigh the advantages. Uh, it is said that the arthritic changes can initiate as early as two to five years after a APM. This added to this, there's an altered gait mechanism, which happens due to lack of meniscal support. Patients who have undergone partial meniscectomy, especially the medial meniscectomy, have been reported to have increased external rotation while walking which can overload the cartilage. This small increase in rotation over a period of time may result in increase of progression of arthritis. In an RCT by Goffin et al. in 2014, initially, at the end of one year follow-up, he concluded that uh, arthroscopic partial meniscectomy is much better than non-operative management. But at the end of three to five years, the same authors concluded that all the positive effects of arthroscopic partial meniscectomy had diminished and radiological deterioration had begun in almost all the subjects in their group. Lou Brian and uh, Etna et al. in 2017 added an inflammatory response theory to this. In addition to the mechanical and the shock absorption function of the meniscus, inflammation usually develops after an injury. This inflammatory response often sets off cytokines specifically interleukin-1 and tumor necrosis alpha, which can lead to the development of cartilage wear and breakdown. This invariably adds to the pain of the knee. So it's very difficult to make out whether the pain is actually from a torn meniscus or from the inflammation per se, which has happened due to the trauma. Next, please. Previous slide, please. And also there's a... Thank you. There's a limb alignment, uh, realignment or the disarrangement which is happening because of the arthroscopic partial meniscectomy. It is well known that in patients with varus knee alignment, there's a greater medial cartilage overload. And the same is true for valgus aligned knees with lateral cartilage being overloaded after APM. There's a huge study, randomized control study, which is called as the fidelity study, the Finnish de degenerative meniscal lesion study. It was done by Shivan et al. in 2013. Uh, it was a randomized control study where they had two procedures. One was arthroscopic partial meniscectomy and the other one was a placebo surgery, which was like a diagnostic knee arthroscopy. They included 146 adults with a mean age of 52 years and with knee symptoms consistent with degenerative medial meniscal tear, which was verified by MRI as well as arthroscopically. And they had no clinical signs of osteoarthritis. They were randomized into two groups. They concluded that there was no clinically important difference in pain or the function when APM was compared with placebo surgery. They also inferred that 
exercise based physical therapy remained non inferior to apm for patients reported knee puncture they suggested that physical therapy should therefore be the preferred treatment over surgery for degenerative tears another cohort study by ranjan et al in 2017 suggested that patients who undergo an apm were more likely to have a knee replacement later on during the follow up as compared with matched patients without apm high quality evidence suggests that apm does not provide meaningful benefits in patients with uh, degenerative meniscal tears and may even be harmful on longer run degenerative menis meniscal tears are a part of osteoarthritic disease and do not contribute to the symptoms independently or in isolation and the symptoms are not treatable with partial meniscectomy if you see this graph basically if you put all the severity of progression of degeneration on the x axis and the y axis which represents the likelihood of poor prognosis and the partial meniscectomy is at the lower bottom of the spectrum whereas total meniscectomy is the top of the spectrum the outcome of partial meniscectomy is inversely proportional to the degenerative process which is happening that means if you want to give a asymptomatic knee you need to remove more of meniscus of the patient depending on the symptoms lesser the meniscus you remove more uh, more function wise his patient is going to you know not improve if the condition is worse so lesser the meniscus you remove better is the prognosis that was the conclusion from this but as the condition of the patient has got more severe effects you need to remove more and more meniscus to give him an asymptomatic period that was the paradox compared to repair a uh, partial meniscectomy even though arthroscopic partial meniscectomy yielded significant immediate relief post operative relief isolated meniscal repairs have better prognosis on a long run there is high evidence high level evidence to suggest that and there is no contradiction to that so just to conclude and take home message try to save the meniscus as much as possible the lesser you remove the better it is have your indications clear arthroscopic meniscal repair improves significantly the symptoms in isolated traumatic meniscal tears as compared to degenerative tears no significant difference in functional outcome was noted in degenerative tears with uh, with partial meniscectomy as compared to that of a physical therapy thank you